Why does it take so much of my time every time somebody else gets married? And it's not even close to just a day of a wedding, which is just a disaster. But it starts about two years out, they call you, tell you you got engaged, and you just gotta be like, oh man, that's great. And every time you see these people in the next two years, you gotta be like, hey, so how's the wedding going? Did you pick your ice sculpture guy yet? Did you get a band? What kind of cocktail hour are you guys going with? As if you could care at all about any of these things, you have to ask them. And then about a year out, you get to save the date. That goes up on the fridge, which is an insane waste of money. But if you care even a little bit about these people, you should know when their wedding is. And then when you see them after that, you gotta be like, hey man, I really uh, like the way you guys look and that refrigerator magnet. I get to look at it every time I open my fridge door, make myself a PB and j because all I can afford to eat this year because I gotta save up for your wedding next year. And then the day of the wedding is another insane multi-venue event. You got to start about lunchtime at the church, and then at the church, nobody's even paying attention. You know, you know where the reception is? Hey, how do we get to the reception? Where's Route 3 from here? And then you finally make it to the reception, and that's not, it's not just like, you know, like a two-hour party. There's a cocktail hour. Where the, the, the bridal party's not there. They're taking pictures. You got to meet people you don't even know trying to make small talk. Then you got the, the, the wedding, the dancing, the dinner. Then there's like a late-night party back at the hotel. It's an insane request of people time to ask for two years of their life and basically a whole weekend so you can get married. Bachelor and bachelorette parties are maybe acceptable if you get married like right out of high school and you never experienced what the world has to offer and you need one night to see what you're going to be missing once you got married. But really think about that. Does it make sense? Because if you live the sheltered life, you might be totally happy married. But now you saw, you know, drinking strippers and you're like, well, I want that, but I can't because I'm getting married. So how long is that wedding really going to last? But where bachelor and bachelorette parties are completely unacceptable, people that get married in their late 20s, early 30s, your whole life has been a bachelor party. Like by the time you're 30, you've been drunk a thousand times, you've been in a hundred strip clubs, you probably have dozens of girlfriends. Why do you need one more blowout with your boys when every weekend for the last decade has been a blowout with your boys? On top of that, bachelorette parties are completely ridiculous. They're loud, they cause a scene everywhere they go. They can't wear regular clothes. They gotta wear like Hanes white tees and they write stuff on them like, you know, last night is a free woman or whatever. And then for some reason, they, they carry around and cover themselves in fake penises. Now, I've never seen a group of ladies hanging out having some cocktails and actually one of them to stand up and say, you know what would be better? If we were surrounded by about 30 fake penises right now. I don't understand how that adds to the time at all. And then guy bachelor parties are another thing that's completely ridiculous because number one, there's never, they're all lies. Everything you hear about a bachelor party is completely fabricated if you don't go to one. Because the guy, if the guy's in front of his girl, he'll be like, yeah, it was all right, man, nothing that crazy. You didn't miss nothing that big. Then the girl will walk out of the room, he'll turn and go, oh man, it was crazy. You killed strippers, we did coke, it was insanity. And then you hear from his friends, like, oh, no, it wasn't that good, man. We had a couple of beers, we were home by midnight, he's lying. So who, who's the truth? I've never heard of a bachelor party where I was like, damn, I really wish I was there. And so the, but one more piece of advice. If you're ever going to invite to a bachelor party with guys you don't really know so well, like maybe it's your, your, you know, your girlfriend's brother or something like that, don't go. Because it will never, ever be your kind of bachelor party guys. They're either going to be super lame, like go to a Yankee game, go to Applebee's for a nightcap and call it a night. Or they're going to be super insane, fly to Vegas, wake up in Costa Rica, hangover type guys. So for me personally, I'm a middle of the road bachelor party guy. Like if we go to AC, I'll gamble. I'm not going to lose my house. I'll have a couple of cocktails. I'm not going to get my stomach pumped. And I'll go to a strip club, but I'm not going to kill a girl and do coke off her dead body. I think everyone agrees with me when I say weddings have basically turned into MTV cribs. They're basically big exhibitions to show people how much money you have and what cool stuff you can buy with that money. It's got nothing to do with showing your friends and family a good time or the life you're about to start with your groom or bride. If you really want to show people a good time at your wedding, you get married in about an hour, you have everybody back to the house, open up the backyard for a barbecue, get a good iPod playlist in the case of 40s, and everybody would enjoy themselves. But no, instead, we force people to wear suits in the middle of summer and bring them to the cocktail hour. Now, let's talk about that. We put a bunch of people that barely know each other into a room, and we bring out the most elaborate hors d'oeuvres we can think of. So we have whole lobsters, crab cakes. We got a guy walking around carving steak. We got a sushi bar. And uh, why? Nobody likes any of this. And on top of that, there's no tables. There's no chairs. There's like there's two there's two cocktail tables in the whole thing that the old people are all ha gathered around. You can't even think about getting near that if you're not like in the VIP section, meaning 
part of the bridal party or the direct relative or one of the bride or groom. And then you got to stand up with drink in one hand, a plate of food in the other hand, which leaves you zero hands for actually putting that food in your mouth, trying to make conversations with people you don't know, will probably never see again, and couldn't care less about what they're trying to tell you. The hardest thing about going to weddings is trying to figure out what to give for the gift. Because number one, you don't want to look cheap, but number two, you already spend a ton of money getting to this thing. How much, can, how much more can you really be asked to give? And if you think I'm lying on this one, go to any cocktail hour and people are all around, what'd you give? Did you write your check yet? How much are you going to give? What do you think this costs per plate? And that last one is what kills me. Why do you think you have to give what the person paid for you to go to their event that they basically strong-armed you to go in, in the first place? You have to give them at least that amount back. Forget that, man. You don't walk in a restaurant and then the waitress just randomly brings you the most expensive thing on the menu and then forces you to pay for it. So yeah, if you pay $250 a plate to give everybody you know surf and turf, that's on you. I'm not responsible for that. I don't eat meat and lobsters creep me out, so I'm not paying for all that. The show Bridezillas is pretty funny. There's nothing funny about real bridezillas. And what I mean by this are women that get engaged and for the next year or two, they put everybody they know on high notice and they're screaming on their mom and their aunts and uncles and their bridesmaids, kicking people out of their bridal party, and all in the name of making their day this fairy tale princess happy ending wedding. Why? Why do you think you deserve this and why do you think you should be able to torment the life of 15 to 20 other people around you? Who do you think you are? This doesn't make any sense at all. Getting married is not that big a deal. Almost everybody gets married at least once. A lot of people get married multiple times. So if you mess up the first one, your friends and family mess up the first one, just do it better the next time around. And on top of that, I guarantee you 90% of these bridezillas are people that have never accomplished anything in their lives. They've never been good at sports, they've never been good at any kind of performance, they've never, you know, never did a play, never sang, or have never been the center of attention in any capacity, was never like the funniest person at a bar for 30 seconds, everybody laughed at one of their jokes, and they want to be that center of attention. They want the spotlight. And the minute they get back from their honeymoons, they get smacked in the face of the reality that, no, you're not famous, no, you still haven't done anything of note, and their husband's screaming at them to get in the kitchen and make them a damn sandwich.